So, um, let's talk about Oxford. These two are going to be going out for an outing pretty, you know, okay? They're going to be going out for the outings with Julie today, um, making sure that everything transfers over to her and that she can take them out in public and everything goes smoothly. Um, a little note here before I give them over to, to Julie is that this is a dog that will benefit greatly from having uh, predictable structure in his life and consequence for breaking that structure, okay? So basically, you can use the, tr the training to enforce structure and that structure keeps the brain in a, in a nice easy spot to live with, right? The dog listens, the dog's calm. They don't go into crazy town where you can't get them back, right? Uh, the corrections, uh, you know, in the form of the e collar comes from when the dog's not listening and it's not being compliant to the structure you're trying to give them and the direction you're trying to give them. So, with, with dogs that have kind of fallen off the wagon and now they need to get back on, meaning, you know, the raising process didn't really go well and now the dog's a mess, and now what we need to do is like get the dog's brain rewired so that it has a healthy response to these everyday associations, like how to relax in the house or going on a walk or the mindset around your owner in general. So going home, a dog like this, um, which is just more of like a rehab case for the brain, he's gonna have old associations, okay? Of, and, and, and behaviors tied to those associations, meaning when he goes to his house, he's gonna say, in this room, in this situation, I did A, B, and C. So I'll try A, B, and C again, right? And then naturally, hopefully, you correct those and you direct so that the dog gets corrected for the things we don't like and we use the training that he's learned here to tell him what we like instead. We keep that on repeat. Now, it sounds easy. You know, and relatively, the concept is easy. It sounds easy. But when you have a dog who's going to be demanding your, you know, when, they, when they're out that you're working with them for the next however long to get them to where they're gonna be. Um, the process of taking the dog's old associations and changing it to the new ones that we want, that's an adjustment period going home. So he's a year and a half, the raising process didn't do good, didn't go well, he's a mess upstairs. That's really where all the problems are just up here and his view, his associations, right? But also his, his view of himself in the past. So, you know, we have videos on this concept of developing a default day to keep it easy for the dog. And we wrap that around our, or the owner's, lifestyle. Okay, so, so we don't get off track when we get home. This goes for any dog that, that's going to need um, a very, let's say, um, dedicated owner to get them past the the uh, adjustment period going home. The default day is the easiest thing. So you basically create a day that works for you and works for him that we can keep on repeat. Simple, a simple life, a simple day that we master, okay? Uh, what we're gonna need is we're gonna need the dog to be good in the kennel, which, which means you're quiet and you're relaxed. You know, you're not trying to get out, you're not, you're not in there yelping, whining, barking, scratching at the bars. None of that stuff, you're just in there relaxing. So we need to make sure we get that. The kennel is home base, okay? Outside of the kennel, we're gonna to need to go potty, right? Because we're gonna eat in the kennel, and we're gonna drink in the kennel, so there's no worries about that. We need to go potty, so we need to teach the dog how to, literally how to get out of the kennel, go to the door, go out to go potty, come back in, using the training. We have heal, we have recall, we have stay. This is something that everybody learns on the go homes. Um, Another thing we might ha want to add is time out of the kennel, right? Which would be in the form of maybe place. Work on pl place is going to be the easier one to work on first rather than like just a down or something. Um, place, I don't know, whenever it fits into your schedule where you want to hang out with the dog uh, in a structured way and work on his, his mind. But place is, remember when the dog's out of the kennel, you're working still. So even though they're on place and they're doing good, you're still working. In these early stages, during that phase of him transitioning, uh, don't put him on place and just you'd be like, he's, you know, I don't need to pay attention to him. That's work, right? When you don't want to pay attention to him, quote unquote, kennel, on base. That's why I work on that first. So we know when we put our dog in the kennel, we don't have to pay attention to them. We can go do adult human things 
and we don't have to worry about our dog. Beautiful thing. Then when we take our dog out, we can work on the dog, right? By, by using our training and putting them in situations that are simple, like going out to go potty, like being on place, eventually getting to a short walk from your door around your, somewhere around your neighborhood and back to your door. Um, eventually we master all these things, but we're going to start with a small life, a simple life that we can put on repeat. Kennel, potty, place time, eventually, you don't even have to start with a walk, that can be it. Eventually adding in a walk that you could, and, and all these things you're doing with intention of correcting what we don't like and directing to what we do like. What you see as the days go on is the dog starts to become the thing that you've worked for. Now, once they're there, which could take a matter of weeks, a matter of months, depending on the dog and the human's uh, lifestyle, how much you get to work on it, how difficult the dog is, you'll know because you're easy in the kennel. I can bring you out the potty without a, it's a breeze. You're, you're great on the place bed when, when we're hanging out in the house. Your walk is mastered. This little small little walk in our neighborhood is mastered. Now if I want to open up your life to try something bigger, we can. But we've already got this home, we've already got this foundation of, of a default life. Meaning if we don't ever do anything else exciting, we can live the next 10 years, however long, 13 years together um, peacefully in the house. You have to get that first. Before you try to go out and go to coffee shops, you try to go, you know, go to a patio and bring them. That is for the pros. That's for the people who've already got the dog under the thumb. If you're struggling, if he's struggling in his kennel, if he's struggling on the place bed in your living room with nobody home but you, if he's struggling on the, a little walk right outside your door to some, you know, right around the block, if he's struggling with the potty, don't leave. Don't get put him in the car and go somewhere. Or don't walk somewhere. Don't go somewhere with him. Because what happens is you fail, and then um, it, it will discourage you. But also, he will have a setback thinking that, you know, if you don't deal with it properly and he has, and he struggles and you get frustrated and just say, leave, he wasn't ready for this. The most concerning part is that he got away with it so that he is going to do it again. So um, we want to start with a small life and be happy with that and, be, and make it as perfect as we can and then go build out. And that's what we did with this guy and that's what I do with my dogs too. So basically you give the dog all the freedom, they live like that for a year or two or more, and then you say, let me take it all away. Versus raising a dog where you don't give them all the freedom, you slowly open up their world, much like how you would with a child. My three-year-old, I'm not teaching him how to drive the car so he can go somewhere on his own, right? We, we are opening up the world slowly. So for the puppy, it's like you learn the recall, um, and the stay, and we can start opening up your world and showing you, in this situation, don't do that, do this. In this situation, don't do that, do this. Now that we have that kind of ability to have that conversation, we can raise our dog when we see something we don't like, we can correct it, we can redirect, we can reset the situation until the dog responds accordingly. Because all these are just responses. If the response works, the dog's gonna do it again, okay? And, you know, works, what's work mean? A lot of these behaviors that we complain about with our dogs are self-rewarding. The behavior itself is rewarding. It doesn't need to be rewarded for it to continue. Barking is self-rewarding. Jumping is self-rewarding. Pulling is self-rewarding. Begging is self-rewarding. Whining is self-rewarding. So just the dog doing it is rewarding. So if you just sit back and ignore it, you don't add anything to the conversation, the dog's already being rewarded. So it's not like it's neutral. The dog will continue. However, science says if we introduce punishment, then we, we can decrease the likelihood of those happening again. And in my experience, you can just stop certain behaviors because the dog doesn't see it as valuable, especially as they are growing up. Meaning as they're going in, they're, they're, they're coming out of their adolescence and going into their adulthood, they're exploring with a lot of things. You might hear them bark for the first time or try to run away for the first time or, or try to get bullying with another dog for the first time. Those good training doesn't stop those things, at least I don't. I just, well, I, I set those things up to see them coming, or even if I don't, once it happens, it's how you deal with it that determines whether or not it happens again tomorrow. So it's not about, it's not like my dog never took a strike at another dog. It's not like my dog didn't try to run away from me. It's not like my dog didn't pull on the leash. They all do it. It's how you respond to it that'll change how they behave tomorrow. Now, the trainers have been saying this for a long time, the best time to train a dog is beloved before a year. Right? A year and under, right? They're, that's like that. Because what happens, just like adults and humans, keep it simple, we grow up and by the time we're, we're full-grown adults, we kind of have a belief system and it's harder to change. 
it's hard to change our associations when we're older. Not impossible, and, and uh, you know, but harder. So, he's a year and a half. Here's the good news. He's a year and a half. He's not six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's a year and a half. He, by the time he's three, because three is a good, three for me anyway is like, okay, you're really an adult now. Like, it's to me a year and a half to say you're an adult, you're like 18. You're like, yeah, we all know you're still a kid. Take the next, my advice to the owner, take the next year and a half to go to get the dog that you want, to put the work in. So this training is going to give you the tools you need to converse with him so that you can then raise him. Take the next year and a half and get rid of the behaviors we don't like, and reinforce the ones we do, and by the time he's three, you might be able to sit back a little bit and be like, wow, can you believe how he used to be? We've come so far, right? He was the same way. This dog was a mess. He was actually, don't tell Oxford this, I think he was worse than Oxford because he was getting himself in fights with dogs, he was pissing in the house, he was destroying the house, he was ripping things up, very leash reactive, um, goes to bite at you if you try to move him off the couch. It's him. This is Riggs, right? Riggs doesn't do any of that shit now, right? <laughs> because <laughs> we started to put the work into our dog because I invested myself in him and I said, I need you to be my right hand man. Guess what? You're going to hang out with me for a couple of years every day. <laughs> and I'm going to give you the love, my love, which is my time and my energy to shape you so that I'm happy with your behavior, so that we can all live a good life together. And he gets more now. He gets to do. He gets a better life now that he behaves. So, when you have a difficult dog, take pride in the fact that you're going to put in the next year, the next year and a half, and go hard on it. When I say go hard, I mean like don't slack. Like hang in there. You know, create the default day. Get that perfect, easy day that you don't have to do anything extraordinary and be happy with that, and then slowly, let's see what else we'd like to do in our life. If you're a person who likes to hike, highly recommend hiking with dogs. He loves it. I highly re recommend if you like to run, uh, if you like to uh, just walk. I highly recommend these things as activities to do with your dog. Swimming, this kind of stuff. Uh, one thing that I would stay away from early on before you had your thumb, or, uh, <laughs> whatever that your saying thumb. is, with the dog under your thumb, whatever that, you know, my dad used to say, this is why it's in my vocabulary. Before you have that, I would stay away from all drive activities. Anything that gets the drive going. So, you know, you don't want to take him out of the kennel while he's still adjusting to his new lifestyle with you and his new relationship with you and be like, hey, do you want to go play tug? Where you can go into prey drive and pretend you're killing something? Or let's play ball where you can go into prey, because he's going to go into prey. I know I'm long enough to see that he's going to use that part of his brain like a shepherd would or something. We don't want him practicing that right now, so we can just take away those activities. Later on, if you introduce something like that when the relationship's right, you're not going to have to worry because you can say no to prey. Like you can, what you can do is you can, you can cap, you can uh, cap how much energy the dog has. So we can play, but I don't want you at a ten. Go down to like a three or a four. Chill, right? But I recommend doing other activities it, once you finally open up the world like hiking and long walks, exploring, you know, this kind of stuff. Ridiculous. So, create your default day. He's got one. Ricky's got his default day. And he has special days too. The cool thing is you will have special days where you're going to be like, hey, guess what we're doing today? You know, we're going to go and we're going to try to do this or that. Those are special days and those are going to be training. Anytime you do something new with the dog, it's going to be training until the dog adjusts to how they should behave and then you can loosen up. Okay, um, I'm gonna let these guys get off here. Good luck, and you know, if we're here if you have any questions. These are gonna go with Zoe today, and they're gonna go to where? Actually, I'm gonna leave him here today, and I'm just gonna take her. Okay. I'm gonna have you touch his nails, because I'm gonna oh, do his right, nails right, tomorrow. Right, right. We'll and then nails. Zoe's nails tomorrow, and he'll go to Lowe's with me tomorrow. Perfect, sounds good. That's the big test. If they can listen out in the real world with you, then you're somewhere good. <laughs>